Hi, I'd like to talk to you about the Thermal Decomposition Lab. Uh, let me show you our equipment. So you're going to use tongs. Now as I'm explaining this, I'll be using my hands, but remember when you're in the lab, um, assume everything is hot, you'll definitely be using the tongs. We have our ring stand with the ring clamp. Here's a crucible with the lid. These are really fragile, be careful. Um, <laughs> Sorry, this is looking pretty old and tattered, but it works really well. Here's a clay triangle. Uh, and then the substance that will be used is hydrogen, um, sodium hydrogen carbonate, uh, sodium bicarbonate, which is just baking soda. It has great purity. Uh, so in this decomposition lab, the probably one of the most important words, decomposition, this one substance is going to decompose, so this is the only reactant, is going to decompose into multiple products. Um, now some of the products will be gases and then one product will be a solid. Um, thermal right here means that we're going to heat it and that's what makes it decompose. So how you do this lab, um, you are first going to get your crucible um, and uh, it depends on your professor. You're going to clean it. Sometimes a professor, professor will have you put a little bit of HCl in it, uh, rinse it out really good, and then you put it on your, let me show you right here, your ring clamp with the clay triangle, and you cook it. Um, you'll cook it for five minutes to burn off any impurities that might be uh, left, that might be remaining. Um, it just depends on, on your teacher, so ask your, ask your teacher. Okay, so let's say that this is clean. You're going to put it on your analytical scale, and then you're going to um, weigh into it a certain amount of substance. Um, now, on the scale, I would tear the scale first, so it's a zero, put this on, and let's say it weighs 40, 40 grams, um, and then pour this in. I have my students use 20 grams of the uh, baking soda, of the sodium bicarbonate. Um, so that means that they'd have to finish at um, you know, close to 60-ish grams, right in there. And I have them record both of those numbers. And then we cook it, after it's cooled, they come back and weigh it. Um, and there's something really, really important here, a mistake that I've seen students make. Students will weigh the crucible, write down the amount, and then they'll get out a little weigh boat, and they will pour the sodium bicarbonate into the little weigh boat, and then pour it in here. <laughs> and then at the end of the lab, they have an issue. They've cooked it, the solid is in here, and then they go through the trouble of scraping out the solid and putting it in the weigh boat. Now, errors. Where can errors happen in this? Number one, that first weigh boat, when you pour into this, and you're pouring it in here, anytime you transfer, you're going to lose some of your substance. And so if you weighed 20 grams in the weigh boat, pouring it in here, I guarantee you're not going to have an exact 20 grams that goes into this. And then the biggest error is after it's cooked, trying to scrape everything out into the weigh boat to weigh it again. So you weigh everything in the crucible, okay? So weigh that crucible, get its mass, add your 20 grams, cook it, and then after it's cooled, you just put that on um, and you have a total mass, subtract out the mass of the crucible, you now have the uh, mass of the solid product, and that's really what we're looking at. Um, okay, a couple of more details for you. So let's say that you have this all weighed, you have your substance inside of here, the Bunsen burner. So you're going to put your Bunsen burner right here. And when you cook with a crucible, you want the inner blue flame to touch. So let's say that this is my Bunsen burner. Wow, that's a really big flame. <laughs> um, Let's say here's your Bunsen burner, there's the flame, there's your inner blue flame. You want to position this crucible so that the bottom is touching the tip, the apex of that inner blue flame. Um, so when you first get it started quickly, you're going to adjust the ring clamp up and down so that as this is sitting here, that inner blue flame is hitting right there at the bottom. Um, now, the ring clamp will heat up quick, and so you want to adjust that quickly. Okay, so we have our Bunsen burner. We have this on here. Remember, I'm touching this with my hands, but I'd be using the tongs. Be careful, go slow. These are slippery, and if these fall, they break like none other. Just super fast, they break easy. Now you're going to put the lid on it. Um, so when you put the lid on it, keep it slightly ajar. You can see it's slightly ajar there, so that the gases can escape. 
when it's cooling, so I take this off, and to cool it, I recommend remove the lid and then get your tongs and remove the crucible. Okay, so let's say that I have my little, um, I have my kids um, cool on wire gauze, um, or you, you might have a little hot pad or something. So it's cooling, put the lid back on it. And here's the reason why. If water is one of the gases that has escaped from this um, and you let it cool, water from the atmosphere can absorb back into that substance and it's going to give you an incorrect reading. Um, and these errors, it's really good to think through all of these errors of, you know what, if this did absorb water, how would it change my result? Um, or if I had used a weigh boat and I poured the substance in here but didn't get all the 20 grams, ultimately, how would that change my result? Would I have more or less of my product? Um, so it's good to be thinking about the errors, um, what they would change for your results, and um, what can you do to minimize those errors and, and the limitations so that you can get better data. Um, so as it's cooling, put the lid on it so that no gases will absorb. Um, if you have an anhydrous substance, if there's water in the air, it will absorb it and it will skew your data. Um, so you let it cool. Now, how do you know it's cool? Um, you're not going to touch it. You're not going to grab it. What you do is you just put your hand next to it to see if it's radiating, just like you put your hands next to a, a fire. So put your hand next to it. If it's still radiating, you give it another five minutes. As soon as you put your hand next to it and you can't feel any heat, tap it. You're like, oh yeah, great, it's cool. And then you're going to put it um, with, take the lid off. You're going to go weigh it without the lid. Um, and that will give you, ultimately, the final mass of the product and the gas has been evolved. Um, from there, there are all different versions of stoichiometry. You're going to use some stoichiometry. What's fabulous is you have a beginning amount of the whole substance, and then you're going to have a final amount of one product. So from there, you can do all kinds of stoich to figure out um, a mole ratio, to get the chemical equation balanced, to find the amount of gas that was evolved. Um, all sorts of things that you can do. So um, there you have it. I think we covered everything. My last admonition, again, just be really careful. Everything will be hot. Everything here will be hot. Do not touch it. Do not touch it. We're using tongs at all times to touch anything. Okay. Have a great day and have fun doing the lab. Thanks.